So welcome to Techno Day at Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we have a special Docker for you today. And so this Docker is transmission with a built-in VPN. And so basically what you'll be able to do is any transmission uh, turning or things like that will go through your VPN provider. So then all your downloading will be uh, not viewable by anybody else on your network. The other nice thing about this uh, container, even if you don't use transmission, is that you can use the Docker to as a proxy for your other containers to go to. So you can have any container go through trans the VPN. And so basically none of your uh, web browsing or anything else you're doing will be visible on the network. And if you like this video, make sure you like, and if you haven't already subscribe, and here we go now. And a special thank you to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. Thank you. And before we get started actually on the video, we just have to talk about the video, uh, the giveaway, excuse me. And so two weeks ago, we had a give you, uh, giveaway, which was a Bevy computer. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen that already, look up in the description here, or the corner here, and I'll have a link to it. And so in that video, we were going to give away our computer, so we'll do that right now. And so this first person's favorite color is green and their favorite video is USB backup, and they're from Puerto Rico. And so the winner is Ishmael Lambretti from Puerto Rico. And so Ishmael, please contact me on the Open Media Vault forums and we'll get that computer, and we'll get that computer mailed out to you. And now on to the video. Okay, so let's get started. So here we are on my Nook, and the first thing we're gonna do is go to Docker. And then in this top right corner here, we're going to type in how Eugene and then click on transmission and open VPN. And then next we're going to click on information and we'll get back there in a second. And then we're going to switch back and click on start. And while that's downloading, we're going to look at some of the information for the container. So if we go back, we scroll down. So this is the information that we need for the container. And so a couple things here, we're, what we're gonna do. So we're gonna add cap add net admin. And so this will give our container access to our network. We're gonna also add in a private network so then we can add other containers to the VPN. We need a storage path for our data set our time, which is done automatically in OpenVPN, create the tunnel, and put in our VPN provider, which we're gonna use NordVPN. Uh, we don't have to put in this one. This is only if you wanna set a particular VPN uh, spot for your uh, VPN or city or server for your VPN to go through. Next, you need your VPN username, password, uh, we're going to enable web proxy so that way our local, uh, other local containers can go through it. We have to add our network in. And so uh, basically why we add our network in is because once the VPN is enabled, then we won't be able to log into that Docker if we don't have it enabled or the local network added in there. So the first part of this, the 192.168.0 will be the address of your network. So for me, it's 192.168.254. And then normally the last dot is your server address, but here what we're gonna put, be putting is depending on your server or your, excuse me, your router, how many uh, addresses are available. And for most people, it'll actually be 0 slash 25. Then finally, we need to put the ports in so that we can access our transmission. 
we scroll down, here you can see here is my VPN service, or so NordVPN, and then in the container what we want to put is capitals, all capitals, NordVPN. And so what you'll need to do is just find your provider, say like this one, and this is how that you type it into the container in order for the container to work. So if we scroll down a little farther, there are some other things that we just want to be aware of. Uh, so if you're having problems with connecting, uh, it could be your DNS server, and so you'll be adding you'll be adding these into the extra arguments at the bottom. Next, we're going to actually enable this. So we're going to add this into our environmental variables, and so what this will do is when the container is set to restart always. The container, if it's inactive or can't reach the VPN, will shut down the container. And then because we have the container set to restart always, it will restart and then reconnect to the VPN without us doing anything. So now if we go back to con our container, you can see it's downloaded. So we'll click Close. And so next what we're going to do is you can go to either Shell in the Box, Putty, or Weddy. Click Web Clients, Advance, Proceed, Login as Root, and your server password. I'm going to type in Clear to make this easier to read. So next what you're going to do is type in ID and your username. So my new user is Jeff. And so here you can see the UID is 1000 and the GID is 100. So we're going to write those down because we're going to be needing those in a second. Next, what we're going to do is create a network for our VPN so we can add extra other containers to it or extra containers to it. So we're going to type in docker space network space create space mynet, then hit enter. And that big long stream of letters and numbers just mean that the network has been created. And so now we can close that. We're going to go back to Docker, and we're going to click on How Eugene Transmission, click Run Image, and our container name is going to be Transmission. And so here you can see it's synced with the host, so we want to keep that there. We're going to put Restart Policy Always. We're going to leave it in Bridge Road right now, but we're going to add some environmental variables at the bottom. Next, we're going to click next to username, password, and provider for OpenVPN. And so we're going to change my provider to NordVPN. And then put in my username and then my password. And then click the check marks next to each one of those. Then scroll down to the bottom of this section. And so here we're going to click the pens next to PUID, PGID, and then web proxy. And so for us, our PUID was 1000. Our PIG was 100. And we're going to put web proxy as true because we're going to make it so other containers can use the VPN. And then click the check marks. Next, we're going to create Tun device, and then we're going to type true, and then hit the plus sign. Next, we're going to type in local underscore network, and then we're going to copy our IP address. And so first, we have to take away the front part and the back part, and then the last digit there. And so now we have our network. So basically everything on my network runs on 192.168.254. And so then it's dot slash 24. And so what this will do is 
Any computer that accesses the VPN through this local network will be able to access transmission and the VPN. Then we're going to click the plus sign. Next, we're going to type in openvpn underscore ops. And so basically, this will allow us to shut down the container if it lose, loses connection to the VPN. And then the container will restart automatically because we put restart always at the top. And so I just copied this from the directions on the other page. So dash dash inactive space 3600 space dash dash ping space 10 space dash dash ping dash exit space 60 and then hit the plus sign. So next we're going to add our container path and so we're just going to hit forward slash and then hit on config and then we're going to go over to our folder on our network go to app data create a new folder called transmission then we can close that and we're going to click on this file here click on our shared folders and then we click on our app data folder and then transmission then click ok then hit the plus sign Next, we're going to hit forward slash again and then data. And so data is your media. So next, we're going to click on the folder, go to shared folders, and then go to downloads, and then click OK, and then hit the plus sign. And then next in the extra arguments here, we're going to be putting in a few things. So the first is dash dash cap dash add equals net underscore admin space dash D. And then hit a space after that. Let's do add in network ability to the container. Next, we're going to add in the network that we created, the dash dash network equals my net. And for most people, that's all that they'll need. Uh, if you have problems, there could be two other extra things that you need to add. And again, the DNS servers, like we showed on the other page. The other is if you have IPv6 enabled, you have to put dash dash systems CL, CTL space net dash IPv dot config dot all dot disable space IPv6 equals zero. Uh, don't have IPv6 enabled and then you won't need this. And then one last thing, we're going to add our ports. So we're going to add in space dash p space 9091 colon 9091. And then once we're done with that, we're going to click save. Now if we click on our container and we click on logs and we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that transmission has started, the tiny proxy has started, and it's broadcasting port 8888 as for our different containers to connect to. Then click close. Next, we're going to click our IP address, copy that, and then paste that here. And then we're going to backspace colon 9091. And then we're going to hit enter. And now we are in our transmission container. And so you can do two different things here. Say you just want to use this to download a file. So what you would do is click on the envelope there. And then you need a URL to paste in here. So we'll go over to Xubuntu. And we're just going to right click and copy link address. Go back to our container and then paste that and upload. And so here you can see it has contacted them and is getting ready to download. To stop that, just click on it. And then either these two buttons will pause all containers. This one will just pause this container. And so next what we're going to do is go to the Chrome store and up here, you're going to search for transmission. And then we're going to go to transmission plus plus. And then we're going to click add to Chrome. 
and add extension. So now it is added the extension and now we just need to set our path. And so for our local host, we're gonna copy our IP address, go back and paste that here. And again, limit, eliminate everything from the front and the back here. If you added a name to transmission with a password, you would put those in here. I, I like clicking Add Desktop Notifications when adding new torrents. Then everything else can be kept as default. And then in the bottom left here, we're going to click on Save. Now what will happen is if we right click on a file, here you can see it says download with remote transmission. So we're going to click on that and just leave it as default. Scroll down and click save. And down here in the bottom right corner you can see a torrent has been successfully added. So let's go back to the transmission web interface. Click on that. And here you can see it has added our 386 version of this and it's starting to download. So that's it for today. Make sure you like and subscribe and you have a great day. Bye bye.